Hey guys, in this video, we'll be looking at how you can go about adding your projects, which would be in Visual Studio, uh, to GitHub for source control purposes. Now, GitHub has been around for quite some time, as at the time of this recording, it is owned by Microsoft, and it is a development platform geared towards promoting open source. Open source essentially means that you're sharing your code, you know, you have a project you worked on, you want other people to partake in it maybe, add to it you know that's what github promotes and so by using github you can actually have a safe place to share your code or host your code um, just in case like you have any technical difficulties your machine goes down or anything like that you know it's here in the cloud then you can just re-download all of your latest work and continue it also does version control which means that uh, for each change that you make you can actually check in that portion and if something goes wrong, you can roll back to the previously working portion. So it, it's very flexible. It's perfect for team coding. And even as an individual, you can reap many benefits from using GitHub. So you get to GitHub by going to, well, github.com. And then you will be greeted with this landing page. You can opt to sign up if you don't already have an account. And it's pretty easy. Just a username, an email address, and a password. And you can see that I already have an account, so I'll just sign in. And this would be my account. No, I usually use this for academic purposes. So today we want to get our school management project that we've been working on. And here it is. We want to get this up on GitHub. Um, so at the time of creating this project, you probably ticked add to source control. You probably didn't. Either way, as we've been going along, you'd have noticed that I have little padlocks and red ticks beside my files. Um, this is an implicit or inherent source control mechanism given to us by Visual Studio, where we can actually track our versions right here on our own local machine. And Visual Studio is allowing us to see what has changed since the time the file has was created or since the last version of that file right so up until now we haven't checked in anything all of our ticks are there if i expand the controllers folder you see that we made changes to all of these controllers so all of them have ticks now what we want to do is actually check in all the changes that we've made best practice of course would actually have us do shorter accounts of check-ins as opposed to building out a whole feature or a whole host of features and then checking in we would want to probably check in per feature so that if anything went wrong, you can always roll back and have one less feature than you did before the thing went wrong, right? So now I'm gonna show you two scenarios. You're either in scenario one where you didn't click add to source control and then your project would look like this. So this is another project that I have and you'd see it has no ticks, no, no padlocks and down here it says add project to source control, all right? So if you're seeing this add to source control, then you can just go ahead and click that. And you should see Git. If you don't see Git, it probably means you did not install the Git function in Visual Studio. So you want to go back to your Visual Studio installer and make sure you select Git in the list of options that they give you. But you can just go ahead and click Git and that would create a local repository on your machine that would allow you to do version control and tracking right here on your machine. So this is processing for a while. Ultimately, what we're aiming for is that once you have done that successfully, then you should see it change to something like this, where you see the Git symbol. Git is the engine behind the source control. So there's a source control engine called Git. And this is the engine behind, say, GitHub, uh, Bitbucket, and quite a few others, even Azure DevOps formerly known as TFS Online, even Azure DevOps is pushing the Git engine, all right? Once you've added it successfully as a local repository, then you should see something looking like this, and you'll start seeing those padlocks and locks and, and those ticks beside your files. It would have asked you to make sure you save all changes before you continue. And then in the Team Explorer, what you will see, I have quite a few here, so you, you may not have this extensive list under your local Git repositories, repositories section, but for me, I have the option of Azure DevOps, 
and GitHub. So at Zero DevOps is also free. You can sign up for that one. Uh, you need a live account to get through with this one, but GitHub is open to everybody regardless of if you have a live account or not. So that's why I'm using GitHub. Uh, and either way, Microsoft owns both. So it's becoming more homogenous as we go along. We can always go ahead and say connect. And if you're not seeing GitHub, then once again, you will probably want to check your your Visual Studio installer and make sure that you have the Visual Studio tools for GitHub. I'm gonna show you guys a nice, easy way to get started. You can right click on your solution and then we go to commit. So I have a few changes that need to be committed. Committing means that you're actually going to send these changes to the source control. You're, you're making a check, you're checking in code literally right so i'm going to submit all of these changes to my repository um so i right click on the solution and i advise you do it at the solution level so that everything that falls underneath in the project or projects will get checked in each time so you just right click that you go to commit and then that changes the menu to ask you which branch master is the default branch and you have to enter a commit message. Now, the purpose of a commit message is to let your team know, or even you, um, because maybe you look back at it and wonder what change was made here, right? So you just put in a comment to say, oh, what new features were added? So let me just do that quickly. Okay, so you can see that my comment is quite long and there are things that I did that I'm not capturing here, which is why I said in the beginning that it's kind of bad practice to be checking in code after a very prolonged period. So you'd want your comment to, to tell the whole story, you know? So in order to tell the whole story, it's better you have short stories than have one big story and then try to capture it all in one big epistle, right? We have added controllers since the start of the project. We have added the data model and we added user authentication functionality. Of course, with each of these changes, what we would want to do is spell out, okay, this is what was done, this change, this is what was done for that change, right? So once again, bad practice here, but I'm teaching you as you go along so you learn um, for your own purpose not to do it like that. And then you'll see commit all and you'd be tempted to just click it, but once again, I wanna show you the simpler way you can go and click this down caret and click commit all and sync. So what sync would do now is ask you, okay, commit all to the local repository and you want to sync it with where exactly. So because we don't have a remote repository, which would be one of the Azure DevOps or GitHub or, or otherwise it's asking us, where do we want to sync it to? All right, so in order to facilitate the sync, what we'll do is just connect to GitHub. So we can just go ahead and click connect. And then this will prompt us to sign in with our username. So I'll just sign in quickly. And then once we sign in with GitHub, we'll see all of our repositories listed. Okay, so after connecting to GitHub here in Visual Studio, what you'll want to do is go to the home and click sync. And then what that will ask you is, it will give you the option publish to GitHub. So you can just say publish to GitHub and then it will give you a tiny menu where it just validates, allows you to change these if you want. You can change the name of the repository as it will appear on GitHub. So you can just say school management or you can add a short description here to the project. So I'm gonna type out a quick description. All right, so I put in a quick description here, created for the Udemy course, learn ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework Database first, because that's the course that this video is associated with. Then, so this, this serves the purpose of letting anybody who stumbles upon the code have an idea of why this was created or what it's for. You can opt to have it as private or public. Private means not, the whole world won't be able to access that code. Public means that, well, the whole world can access that code if they go on GitHub. And then you can just click publish. All right, so once that action is completed, you'll see a, a, another change here. It will show you the direct link to your repository here on github.com. So if you click that, it will navigate your browser to that. They also give you the ability to manage a few things from GitHub right here in Visual Studio. So you really don't have to go to the website much after just creating your account, right? So if I go back though, and I refresh here, 
then I would see that I have the repository as was promised, right? So I can go to school management and then it will let me know that four whole commits were made because what happened was that I, on my computer, I was making commits to my local repository. You might not have been. So you would see probably one commit made, but all of mine that were being made locally were all pushed to GitHub. So GitHub has the same record of changes now that my local repository had as I was going along, going along using it only locally. So here you see the code. And if you follow this link, you would be able to see this code. Um, at any rate, you know, using GitHub, it allows you to share it with, with facilitators or, or your friends and, and share whatever it is you're trying to do. If, if you're attempting something and, you know, it's not working out, you can just send it to GitHub, ask somebody to check on it, though it is ill-advised to check in or commit code that doesn't work. So I would advise you that if it hits GitHub, it should be operational, meaning if I come along, stumble upon it and try to download it, and I can always either clone it and get the source files synchronized with my Visual Studio, or I can just download it in a zip or just, well, as, as the owner, I can open in Visual Studio, or I can just download the zip here as a, as a passerby and have the project as you would have uploaded it. So that's how you get your code up to GitHub. GitHub is very cool, it's very powerful. And I hope you get through this exercise pretty well. If you have any difficulties, feel free to drop me a line and let me know.